Hi everyone, welcome to Warhammer. We're your hosts, Jack and Dan. Today we're going to be looking at the latest Necron Codex reviews that have been coming out. Yeah, loads of new information about what's going to be in the Codex, some new models. There's yep. there's, uh, there's more Necron information you could shake Zarek staff at, I think. It really is, it really is. And next up is the unit review. Yeah, we're doing Chaos Space Marines uh, Chosen this week because uh, they played a key role in the World Warhammer Championships winning list. Perfect. And then lastly, we've been recently going to a, a doubles tournament at the West Allotment Wildlings Club. And Dan, how'd that go? Oh, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to tell you why doubles is certainly my favourite mm -hmm. new way to play and probably yours, I guess. That it really is. So yeah, stay tuned. First up then, we're looking over the Necron reveals that's just came out in the latest Codex. Yes, this is the... We were... Uh, Kind of right. This is the third codex to come out in tenth. Yes, um, and it, 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 there is uh, some really exciting new ways to play Necrons, and some mm. some which uh, feel like mm. we copied some other factions' homework. <laughs> but we'll get to that as we go through. Stop stealing the ideas, but yeah. they are. Yeah, I think like each writer and GW are stealing off each other right now. Yeah, because um, well, we'll get in it with soon. But yes. there's, uh, I think, two of our detachments that we have have been stolen from other armies. Clearly, clearly which, stolen. Yeah, it's just purely just ripped off from yeah. them, uh, which is which is unfortunate, but. It, at the same time, it's still a fun way to play a Warhammer. Yeah, it's the influence of Chaz and the Infinite. That's what I'm putting it down to. He's gone, I like mm. that. I'm stealing that. I'm stealing it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess starting from the top then. Yeah. So, our Codex has just came out. You can get it on pre-order now. Um, I've already purchased, or I've it's on its way, basically, yes. hopefully. Um, obviously, I've picked up the new models, uh, which is um, the Stormlord. Um, Orican yes. and the new Overlord the, model. Yes, the new, uh, the new like translocation, yeah, translocation kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so so you, you basically just pressed buy all, didn't you? I <laughs> did. I, I went straight to Element Games. I was like, right, essentials. I was like, bye, bye, bye. Yeah. So yeah, I've got the codex, the free models, and the the data cards or the data slates, however you want to nice, say. Them. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, looking forward to them. Uh, there was no dice available, uh, which sucks. And what they'd already sold out, already or? sold out, just being unavailable, right? Uh, which kind of sucks. I really like the dice and the Necron ones. Mm. Um, and also on the main GW website, the um codex for the limited edition version, I think that was sold out within an hour. Um, yeah, when I checked, it was sold out within an hour, and then some people on Reddit were saying it was like five minutes and it was sold out. Wow, so yeah, I mean, maybe that's, it's kind of um, par for the course, it seems, at the moment, with a lot of a lot of new products, mm. uh, they seem to sell out very quickly. It really is, which really sucks for us because I really want, I mean. It was a pretty pricey. It's sixty pound or thirty five pound for the standard one, so an extra what twenty five quid just for an artwork. A different cover. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, everyone in this hobby, we're all collectors. That's why we buy codex, yeah. codexes as well as minis, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, the extra twenty five quid for the different artwork, even as a Necron player, I wasn't going to do that. Ah, I just want. I've, I've ordered. I've pre ordered the codex, same as you. That's as far as I've got yet because I'm skint. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it uh, is Christmas coming up. So. Yeah, I mean yeah. Christmas to Dan though. Yeah, you can get it fired for yourself. But yeah, like, yeah, we'll see. To Dan yeah. from Dan. To Dan from Dan. Yeah, put some extra presents under the tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, uh, I'm, I think overall we're pretty excited to see the new codex. Do you want to take us through what we've yeah. learned so far about the, the new detachments? Then? So again, GW haven't sent us the codex. It must have got lost in the mail. Don't yeah, worry, yeah. GW, it's all right. Look, just send it. I'll send you the address again just to make sure you've got it. Yeah. Um, but yes, so kind of starting off from the top then. So not nothing's changed in regards to our core rule. So currently, Necron's core rule is every command phase we get D3 wounds back, um, and that's not changed. We still get yeah, that. So that's army-wide. doesn't matter yeah. what your detachment is. Correct. Right. Okay. Exactly. So not much to talk about on that front. It is still the same. There are some caveats to it later, such as mm -hmm. the reanimator that's changed and the resorb that's changed, yes. which we can get into later, um, but that affects obviously more reanimation rules. Um, Good. So what we'll do is, we'll, uh, since we've not got the codex, we'll just do a, a, a gloss over of each of the attachments to kind of give our thoughts on on each of them. Yeah, go for it. I think it'll be good. Once we get the, the core codex, that's when we'll do our own review and a deep dive and give our thoughts and get some one more combos. I think it'll be really good. Yeah, yeah, at the moment, I think it's it's the highlights and lowlights, really, yeah. what we're going to try and cover, give it, you an, an early taste, and then we'll do we'll do the, we'll the get right into it in a later, exactly. later time. Exactly. So the first one is the Awakened Dynasty. Um, this is obviously something that we already have so far. So this is whenever a noble unit is leading, uh, they get an extra plus one to their hit rule, which yes. so is that's, always nice. That's how you play the mini index, isn't it? That, it is. That's the index detachment. Yes. Okay. So Fair nothing, enough. Again, nothing's changed on that one. I am curious to see if they keep the noble keyword, because obviously we have a lot of cryptex in there that aren't nobles. So... 
they aren't able to give the the plus one. You've got to have mm. an overload or mm. a load. But obviously, we know now know that one of the models that were, were has been removed are the load models, some of the older ones. Yep. So I'm wondering if they're going to then remove those models and then maybe expand the noble keyword or make it like a, a character. A, a character. Yeah. If you if unit. a character's leading unit plus one to hit, that's exactly. what it should be. Hopefully so, because if not, then we are a bit limited, more mm. limited now on which units we can give that bonus to, yeah. which units we can give it to. Um, so yeah, not much to really talk about that. Again, I think it's going to be a good one. I think it's you know tried and tested. It is working. We're sitting on 48% win rate so far. Yeah. So we're above the gold dock zone. I think very briefly before we move on, I think it's worth touching on that like obviously I haven't been running Necrons for a while mm. and, and, and uh, because I found them to be a little bit dull. Like the detach- that right. detachment rule was basically it, it is. walk up the board and try not to die. It pretty much, and, yeah. And I think you were even kind of saying the same thing that, that it's um, as much as a... Uh, Resilience is obviously deep in the yeah. deep in the Necron lore. It's like a foundation yeah. of Necrons. It's not the most fun way to play, is it? It's not. It's not. It, it gets it gets a bit boring. Again, we're getting it later. But there are often some situations we were in in the doubles tournament yes. recently, um, <laughs> which unfortunately for a, an opponent, it like, probably feels bad for the opponent. Yes, yeah, yeah. which yeah, right, I completely yeah. stand. But yeah. I mean, to be fair, like overall, that the attachments probably suffered a nerf because with that one, you'd normally come one more combo that with like the Lich Guard. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, inherently, always all also get like a minus one to wound with yes. them being led by a noble. But yes. again, the that has been removed now. So, yeah, um, we'll come on to that in a minute. But Death Bricks of Lich Guard are, are, are a thing of the past. Thing of the past. Yeah. yeah, so we'll see. Um, perfect. Well, the next attachment that we've got is the Annihilation Legion. A lot of people are talking about this online at the minute and just proper rinsing into it. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of quite fitting given the way yeah. the way GW is trying to set Necrons up um, in, in terms of developing their lore is a civil war is brewing yeah. between... Um, Immortech, the Storm Lord, yes. and the Silent King. Yes. And uh, this has been, uh, luckily for Nec- Necron players on Facebook and other social media, have already been waging this civil war for about two yeah. years. Yeah, and it's yeah. flared back up again because, yeah, people saw this detachment and were immediately like, this is trash, I can't believe what they've done to Necrons. Yeah. And then other people are like, well, actually, you know, let's have a bit more perspective. Exactly. But why are they so upset about this? Uh, well, it's because it sucked. <laughs> 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 there's, there's nothing to it. There's nothing more to it. I, don't know. I, I mean, the creativity must have run out or, yeah. or it's, it's bled out. The, the well's dry on this one, unfortunately. Right, right. You get um, to re-roll your charge rolls for okay. destroyer cult units and flayed ones. That's it. Okay. Come on. And you like, can add, if the unit's below half strength, you get plus one to the charge. When have you ever... Been in a situation where you're going to charge a unit that's below half strength. Yeah, you got you wanted to be you, fine. You score into you whatever your opponent's yeah. um, nastiest unit was, and right. then chopping them in small pieces. They're already going to be dead. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. So in, in, any units that are below half strength, you're not even going to worry about them, or they're already dead, or you're already already in combat with them. Yeah. So it's not really going to come up a lot. And that plus one to charge. Well, that's not. I mean, at least give them like I don't know, plus one to wound. Yeah, plus one to hit. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, I mean, yeah. space marines get like what well, when they charge and some of their units it's like plus yeah. one to hit, plus one to wound. Yeah, oh, you get to reroll these as well. We get nothing in this one. Yeah, which, I still, like, I, I still think it's that GW are keen trying to keep the reins very tight yeah. on melee and um, melee detachments. Um, just aren't getting the love that they nah, need at the moment. It seems like all. a very deliberate strategy. It is, which really sucks because this is the only. Do I dare I say creative? <laughs> yeah, the, you know, this is one of the only ones that's different. From what we've not seen in the codex already, and it yeah. sucks. It's just it's boring as well. Plus one charge. Oh great, yeah. Are oh, you blow off strength? No, I'm okay. I yeah. mean, I love my Scorpex. They're my favourite choppy boys. I will give this a try, and um, I certainly will be looking at it oh. from a narrative perspective as well. Yes, obviously, yeah. but in terms of like you know, as as we would consider ourselves, like, as we keep saying, like casual competitive. Um, if you're trying to play, if you if you're anywhere near trying to play a competitive game, this mm. is not going to be the detachment yeah, for you. It, it, I was saying last time, I've got. Forty flared ones ready yeah. to go. I want to use them, and I can't use them like that. No. But I'll knock it up the board in time for no. us to actually benefit that. Um, so we'll have to see how it goes. They might get some changes. I really hope they do. The stratagems that's in there as well. We're not going to go into the stratagems too no. heavily, but the ones that are really there are, are just like extra pluses here and there, and they're very situational. You've got to be in the right place at the right time, and in order to combo your stratagems with your attachment rule, virtually impossible. Because right. again, 
already you have to be below half strength. But yeah. again, you're already in a very situational place for that to pop off. Yeah. And then the other ones you have to be in a certain place at the right time. It's just not going to work as well as they think it was. Well, let's we'll draw a line on that one because it's um yeah that could it, be there all day. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, could, yeah, I, I can be, tell. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I'm we're, about we're both very deep. Yeah, they I are. Think, all right. Yeah, that the it was the Novok Dynasty or a, or a um, destroyer cult was the way I love to play yes. Necrons. And um, I was when they brought I, that in, I was yeah. like, that's, that's great. I was like. Yeah, that's so good. You have all these destroyer cults. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, let's make something of it. At the time, it wasn't. Again, it was flavor fair, yeah, flavorful, yeah. but it wasn't. It wasn't impactful. meta, was it? Yeah, yeah which is still fine. It's still but good. Yeah, but this one's not even impactful. No, we're both pretty devastated about yeah, this one. But let's are. go from the ridiculous to the sublime. Um, there are some really uh, interesting yeah. detachments here. There is the next one that's on the list is the Canoptic Court. Mm-hmm. The best one that's out there, right? right? Uh, this is again everyone's screaming about it. Um, the only issue that is is I know you're laughing already, Dan. You're laughing already. Is that this is ripped straight out of the Chaos Demons one? Yeah, the it's, army rule is very similar, isn't it? It's too, it's literally just a different name. That's all it is. So what this detachment rule is, it's a it's a bit bit longer than the other ones, but basically, um, in your, there's uh, the free zones. So there's your deployment, mm-hmm. your opponent's deployment, mm-hmm. and no man's land. Yes. So your deployment is always what's called power matrix. Right. Whatever that is. So power matrix is what they've called it. Which is basically the same as Shadow of Chaos or whatever. Exactly. Isn't it? Shadow right. of Chaos. Um, if you control um, half or more of the objectives in no man's land, that no man's land is also counted as power matrix. Right. And then same for the opponent's deployment. So if you control your yeah. opponent's deployment, then again, that is power matrix. Interesting. It really is. So if you control these um, zones, basically all canoptic um, and cryptic units in your army, we roll hit rolls of one all the time. Nice. That's fantastic. Um, and while they're wholly within the power matrix, this changes the full rerolls. So that's wound rolls as well. That is really tasty. That's unreal. And so basically, based on that alone, Cryptex and Canoptic units are back in stock. And Scarabs, back to OC1 when next to a Cryptic. Oh, yes. Uh, or a Canoptic, sorry. Yeah. Um, so again, they're already coming back as well, which is going to be yeah, absolutely the, lovely. I mean, there's a... We'll talk in some detail about some yeah. of the units that could be using that later on, mm. but that that is a really uh, feels straight off the yeah. page a very strong, very well, very strong. End of ninth, everyone was just using wraiths. So I love wraiths, yeah, yeah. So now this is going to be you're going to see a lot more wraiths coming in, and again, wraiths have got an extra wound now as well. Mm. And again, we'll talk in a little later, but they've also got an um, the, you can also attach the technomancer yes. to them. To give them the five up, feel no pain. Yeah, that's that's going to make them absolutely solid. That, that that combo is what's going to make this detachment probably the best one. Yeah, um, along with actually, sorry as well. I know we're, we're skipping ahead here, but it, it's really important to to know why this mm-hmm. one's going to be so important. Is most of our units have regained the plus one movement again, so we lost negative one in yeah, the index. Yeah, everything almost almost everything lost a pip of movement in yep. the index, didn't it? Yeah, but we've got that back. Right. So again, so we're much mo- much more mobile. Mobile. We're tougher. Yeah. We're stronger. And we hit harder. <laughs> I was going to say the uh, Daft Punk song there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll not do it. I'll not do it just in case. <laughs> I don't know. Can we get copy strike? But yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You probably, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. yeah. Um, but yes, no, that is uh, an absolutely fantastic one. Um, it, I, I'm really looking forward to playing it. I've not got a lot of wraiths. I remember end of ninth, everyone was saying, you know, if you want to be, you want to be one of the top dogs, you need wraiths. And I sat there in my corner and I was like, no, I was like, I'm not <laughs> having rifts. I don't want them. I was like, I like my lich god. I like this. I like that. Um, and I probably will stick with that for a while. Yeah. Because I don't want to buy. And I've got twelve. I've got two. I've got two yeah. squads of six, and I'm I'm already thinking about getting another squad yeah. of six. <laughs> um, I've I've already got the three. Uh, I just I, they look like an absolute pain to build. Pain they're, so. they're 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 not the easiest models to build. Yeah. But paint wise, they're actually not too bad. Yeah, um, yeah they're okay. It's but, a bit of dry brushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, yeah. Fair. But, but yeah, no, it, it's it's just they, like they haven't come off the shelf at all for mm. um uh, for tenth yet. So I'm looking forward to running them. Yeah, I don't think I should play them either. To be fair, yeah. I'm just. I'm not needed to. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> um, but perfect. So uh, the next one mm. is, oh, what's this one called, actually? The, the Obeisance Phalanx. Yes. So this one, their detachment rule is called Worthy Foes. Mm. So uh, in each of your command phases, you can pick one enemy unit and your units uh, with one of this detachment's uh, relevant keyword yep. get plus one wound against it until the next command phase. So it's it's like a mini oath of moments, isn't it? Yeah. You but pick it's... one unit, but instead of reroll hits, it's plus one to wound. Exactly. Right. Which is nice. Yeah. It's good. But again, it's... It's a little bit similar. It's pretty much similar, uh, if not worse, <laughs> than, than the oath of moment thing. I would rather have oath of moment. Yeah, yeah I yeah. would as well, yeah. 
Uh, but again, it's just like, wh- where's this copy paste coming from? Like, mm. like, do the is the same writer writing the same rules across the codexes, or do they actually have different writers? So, um, we'll talk about this a little bit when we get to Meta Watch. But one of the things that um, Stu Black uh, said, and Stu Black always picks his words very carefully, was saying that he was saying in Meta Watch that one of their philosophies is that they want uh, the game to be. Uh, so balanced that it just comes down to individual player ability rather than um, you know Uniqueness one detachment or... having one more combos or except mm. that kind of thing. And I and I'm uh, but they, it does feel like they are um, that is going mm. to mean sacrificing a lot of individuality yeah, of factions. Yeah. It's just like, so you know mm. it, uh, there's going to be an overlap between some factions where you have sim- you could play them both in a similar or the same way. See, I get it, and I, I do get it for a competitive mindset kind of thing. But for us casuals who just like play mm. the game and have that uniqueness and yeah. being like, I, I like when like someone pulls like a, an ability out, and I'm like, oh, what what's yeah. that? What is that? I've never seen that before. What's yes. that you? And whereas now, if we're moving towards that direction, it's going to be like. You're gonna be like, all right, cool. That's power matrix. I'm like, all right, class. So yeah, chaos knight, uh, chaos thingy. I understand yeah, what it's okay, same it's as like, chaos no, demons. Like, yeah, that you know, hyper crypts the same as uh, are similar to gray knights, etc., yeah. etc. Et yeah. And then from a even from a competitive standpoint, that's that's like you know you can learn much quicker what mm. which you know how to play against those. Yeah. And I think there is the risk with this is there's a danger that they paint themselves into a corner still where mm. they will come up with one faction or one detachment yeah. within that faction that is able to counter every all of these limited number of ways to play yeah so let's say we end up with say seven or eight different ways to play um mm-hmm. in the game or nine or ten or whatever it doesn't sure. but if they accidentally um in the codex creation accidentally end up with one um army or detachment that can counter all of those then yeah. that will just become the top of the meta and they won't be able to do anything about it <laughs> it's very true so it, yeah. it, it, it is i can see why they're going for it i think that is the big um risk for me is mm-hmm. uh, as long as then they're gonna have to be super careful that they don't end up and i guarantee you it'll be the bloody eldar yeah. codex when they do it so. <laughs> exactly <laughs> Exactly. Um, but yeah, yeah uh, beyond they get, the, yeah. they get all the special treatment. Yeah. Yes, but beyond that, it's um yes. Uh, there's one more um, detachment. Last I one. Think, to, yeah, last one. Uh, yeah, and certainly not least because this one is mm. fascinating. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to this yeah. one. Uh, again, it's a bit of a rip off from another codex out there, the Grey Knight. Yeah. Um, but this one is the Hyper Crypt Legion. Um, so their detachment rule is hyper phasing. Mm. So you can redeploy where two, three, or four units, depending on what battle you're playing, mm-hmm. um, at the end of each player's turn, completely ripping off the Grey, uh, Grey Knights rule and calling it their own. Yeah. Now, uh, with the Grey Knights, because it's all about teleportation, all of their units can like deep strike. Yes. So the, 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 with this, um, you're going to have to be careful with this detachment rule, which units you take, because... If your unit doesn't have deep strike, if you you can take it off the board, yeah. you can't deep strike it back on. It has to come on as if like strategic reserves mm. from a board edge. Right. So that I mean that you know as long as you're aware of that, that can still work. Sure. But it's not got quite the same flexibility as Grey Knights. Exactly. It's but true. There's, but there's an awful lot of um, shenanigans in this detachment mm. and movement shenanigans and movement. Because with the monoliths and yeah. stuff that you can do and teleport well, them to them. A lot of it seems to be built around monoliths. There's, yeah. there's a, at least a couple of the strats that only work with monoliths, which mm. is very, very specific. It, um, so you might as well have called it the monolith detachment, really. <laughs> which I would have been happy with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're a triple, triple monolith, triple man. Yeah. Mono, honestly, yeah. <laughs> I would love to. Um, I think but, I still will. <laughs> well, yes. I think about one of the challenges with taking monoliths in, a, in the modern game, particularly competitively, is trying to get around a board. Um, yeah. You know, there's an awful lot of terrain on a board, on a, on a tournament board these days. It is. Monoliths are pretty chunky boys. They so are, if you, and if, they're just yeah. awkwardly a square. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, like yeah. you, you kind of get around. But if you can... If you can Every turn, if you can deep strike it, kill something, and then take it off the board in your opponent's turn, and then deep strike it again. Yeah. And there's, with the strats and some of the abilities it's got, it can move other units around the board, etc. There's an awful lot going on there. There is. There I think is. for me, um, uh, as a um, more of a monkey brain player, oh, uh, no. I think the Canoptic one sounds easier yeah. for me to run and still get good results. Mm. I do think there is, uh, for bigger brain players, there's yeah. a lot of play in this detachment. I, I think I'm probably going to be running this one more just because I like the flexibility of moving. The yeah. front. I've said it pretty much on every single time we've done a video, yeah. but movement in 10th is absolutely it's key. massive, isn't so it? Just to get around the board and surprising your opponent and I guess also protecting your units. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah. part of you lose a unit, you're like, all right, I'm just going to get them off. Or or again, if they've maybe got their no prisoners and they're, I need to kill some units. Bye. Yeah. Take them off. <laughs> like, right, you're not getting that yeah. anymore. Um, so and, yeah, uh, really for uh, that and the secondary game as well as we talk about you know the, the movement is mass is huge yeah. and then um, there is a there's yeah there's a there's an awful lot more to 10th edition than just killing your opponent as much yes. as fun as that is yeah but um movement wins your game so 
Definitely. There is, for, for as I said, the, the more strategic players, the ones that can plan ahead, think ahead, react quicker to uh, challenges in game, this is going to be an interesting detachment. Be very good. I still think the Cryptek one is, um, is uh, the Canoptic Court is strong. Yeah. That's the strongest. Yeah. But this one's pretty good. It's very true. Uh, perfect. Well, that's kind of the detachments. Well, mm-hmm. again, we're not going to go directly into all the stratagems or enhancements quite yet. We'll want to get our hands on the Codex first to give our a, yeah. a proper review, I want to say, because... Yeah. Yeah, you because know, we're talking about like you know this is bad, this is good, this is bad. We don't know what the points are yet, so until we see the points, yeah, absolutely right, we're, we're not going to be able to tell you. You know, this legion, this detachment's the best, or for this reason, it's we need to see how you know yeah. the annihilation legion could be the worst one on paper. But yeah, hey, if Scorpex, those flayed yeah, ones might be forty points each. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, if Scorpex are fifty hey, points for three or something, then it I'm changes buy, the game. I'm it? buying another eighty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm having a full board of flayed yeah. ones coming up that board. That would be so, awesome. Yeah, so just like well, we'll see what the points are like. We'll see what each of the data sets look like in full, um, and then we'll give a proper review, I think. I'd love to see a themed flayed one list like that, where yeah. each, each flayed one um, unit is distinct because it's like taken bodies from a certain fa- other faction. Yeah. So you've got ones with like bits of Eldar armor on yeah, them or bits yeah, of guard yeah. armor or something. Uh-huh. That would be class. That would be nice. That's yeah. a good little thing to do, actually. I like that. Um, perfect. Well, moving on to kind of the changes that we've noticed in all of the little data slates that are out there currently. Yeah. If I if I just to quickly interrupt, mm. just uh, just to say like um, this is a massive amount of changes compared yeah. to the changes from the Tyranid and Space Marine index yes. to Codex. There weren't mm. that many changes to data slates. No. We've had an awful lot of yeah. changes so to data any slates. Any data, data cards, data slates that you've purchased? Yeah, like if you myself, bought the index cards. <laughs> Slumps, yeah. aren't it slumps? Yeah, we are chumps. Chump, well, chumps. Yeah, I mean, I didn't buy them for that reason because I was, um, I was. It was a risk that they were going to change them. It, it I, was, even it I wasn't was. expecting this many changes. Yeah, but yeah, um, um, I mean, you could you argue, could probably get away with like just marking them off, like tipping I mean, them over. Yeah, right you, need, you need, yeah, definitely buy a bottle of tipping. But there's yeah. there's a lot of changes. Let's start going through them. Then. Yeah, because there's absolutely loads to go through. We'll rattle through them. So the first one, um, bit of, well, oh, I say, I was going to say a bit of a nerf. It's a massive nerf. So mm. the um, reanimator that's currently out there currently. That has a 12-inch aura, yes. giving you an extra D3 mortal wounds back to a yep. unit. Um, unfortunately, that has been reduced from 12 down to 3. Yeah, so it's it's a 3-inch bubble, which three. is but it's very... Um, what With the 12-inch bubble, you could you could move them roughly mid-board, hide them behind yeah. a building or something. In a, your entire and, and army you, and you, Yeah, you were, getting, yeah. you were covering a lot of your army with that aura. Uh, three, I would have liked to have seen 6 inches rather than yes. 3, I think would have been a good compromise. Yeah, 6 12, inches 12, nice. 12 was a bit much. Well, 3 was the original one, that's why no one used it originally, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was 3 and you had to be focused and seeing it, and it was like, this is bad. So a 3 inch, I mean, what do they expect? Because it can, it, it can basically, it will only work with one, one. you know, it, you, you, it, maybe 2 units it, if you're lucky. Well, I see that now as a backfield one for all your shooting, arm, shooting abilities. That's a really good like, idea, it, it's yeah. It's no longer a one that you're going to be using and moving up the board. Yeah. If you're a lich guard, yeah. you can't because... If you're keeping them behind your lich guard and they twelve charge twelve inches, or you know tra- charge the, the average of nine. I've never made a twelve inch charge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dude, um, we don't, also don't need to worry about lich guard anymore. No, we yeah. don't. Yeah, we'll get that later as yeah. well. But yeah, so that's no longer going to be. Yeah, a thing. so, we'll, so we'll, I think point, it's going to be a point, back, back it's got, They have to massively drop the point surely to to uh, reflect that. <laughs> to me, well, but again, like what if this is again? We'll get once we cover the uh, entire lot. I think Necrons are completely more of a shooty army yeah. than a melee army. Yeah, that's a really so, good shout. Although we're saying this is, oh, this is bad, it's went from 12 to, to 3, I think this could still could be used in shooting armies mm-hmm. to keep them stacked behind. Yeah, good point. Because it could point. be could be in the back end. Um, cool, so, next so, one. Yeah, going from the little reanimator to the massive monolith. The um, monolith. Lost a point in toughness. It has, yeah, from 14 to 13 now. Two um, up save. Yeah, it's got two up save. It gained some. I think it gained um, a couple of extra wounds though to to uh, reflect right, that. Right, so realistic, like twenty six something now. Realistically, um, fourteen to thirteen. Um, I suppose. I mean, how many strength seven weapons are there? But basically, a, a, a strength seven weapon or above will now be wounding it on uh, fives. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, all out and then the mega mega anti tank guns are still going to be wounded on threes anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, so yeah. And, um, um, toughness thirteen. Yeah, and as we touched one. on before, in that particular detachment for um, the hypercrypt one, this is uh, it's built around a monolith. So yeah. expect to see a few more of them. Exactly. Um, so yeah, a couple more things. Though. It has still has deep strike, which is lovely. And mm. obviously, as you mentioned, the stratagems will teleport units to it. And it's probably going to have a built-in one to teleport units as well, because that probably. was in ninth as well. Yeah, so I, I think uh, you know, it, it's yeah, it's going to be. It's definitely got. Up. It's definitely the way you need to put one of those in your list. At least one, if you're yeah. playing that that detachment, be very nice. I'm interested to see. I've, I don't think I couldn't find any stats for it, but the Tesseract Vault. Ah, uh, yes. I'm curious to know if that's going to make an appearance. I don't think it will. I think they've 
overstretched on how big that model is I mean, for, the usability, yeah. for the usability. It, it's still in there, but you just can't, On um, as we just touched on before, it's hard enough for a monolith to get around the board, but the Tesseract Vault is a lot bigger. You it's just can't massive. fit it. You just, no. And a, we fly now. Yeah. In it's a, awful. In anything close to a competitive game, there's no place for it. it no. It's only going to get uh, played in casual and narrative. It really is. So no, no, um, I couldn't find any information on that. So we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. The Catan shards. Oh, yes. Oh, they're back. Yes. And I love them. So, really lovely. So, all three or four named Catans, um, plus the, yes, yeah, all three Catans plus the uh, Transcendent, yes. now have a five up feel no pain built in. That's brilliant. Unreal. Yeah. So, any of the, um, in the past, um, you could put an attachment on the Transcendent one to give it a four up feel no pain. Yeah, the Sempaternal Weave, wasn't it? Yeah. In, yeah. And everyone was screaming. It yeah. was too powerful. Yeah. So, I'm. V- I'm saying I'm very happy. I feel bad for a lot of the people out there that they've now, all of them have a, a baseline five up feel no pain. I think it's a very, very good move because the Katana are not cheap units no. um, and they're meant to be, you know, the shards of star gods. They're yeah. meant to have a presence and they were getting yeah. um, deleted off the board yeah. too quickly. Well, a squad of um, a Cascadian command squad was yeah. just like, I'm going to take your Inven away yeah. and you get like minus two to your, to your saves. Yeah. Like, all right. a, a star god is getting yeah. absolutely pooped on by a guy with a yeah, flag. Yeah, like, go yeah, away, man. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah, so, it's yeah. very true. So I'm really excited to give that a whirl out. Yeah. Um, I think you will... I'm not sure which detachment it's going to be in, but you could well see Triple Katan list yeah, um, getting I mean, some the, competitive I mean, play. Again, just the, the simple inherited... Because obviously they always pay on ones anyways, so maybe the minus one to wound. They also the plus one extra one to wound might be useful. They're yes. already really strong yeah. anyways, but yeah. just ensuring that it's always going to be a free up, a two yeah. up is always going to be nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good to see what that will happen to those ones. Uh, Resurrection Orb has now changed as well. So, um, a bit of a strange one because people, mm. a couple of people online were saying that this has been improved, but I don't it, think it, it has. Well, mathematically, it certainly hasn't. No. Um, so, if I'm reading this right, mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, as thing in the index, a Resurrection yeah. Orb, if, which is carried by your Overlord or, yeah. or, or was a Lord, um, that gives in each command phase, so my command phase and my opponent's command yes. phase, I can pop that. Yep. And it res- and, and enact my re- resurrection protocols. Yep. So minimum is going to be D three per per command phase. Per D command three wins back in my unit. Exactly. But that's each command phase yes. as well, though. So mine and so, the opponent. So over the course of a game, the maximum you could get would be ten D three. Yeah. Because so it's five in my command phase and five in yours. Yep. So that would be anywhere between ten and thirty wounds back. Probably so not the first round, probably, but yeah, well, yeah. averages. But yeah. that's that, that's the maximum. Yeah. Whereas this one is now a one shot. It's a one shot D six for the unit. So how we, how can one D six yeah. per game be better it's than not. up to thirty wounds per game, ten D three per game? Exactly. It's it's not. Which no. and then again, that's once per game, so it's gone. It's just it's not as good. It's, it's rubbish. Like, I was saying to you before what it should have been, which probably should have been better, is a once per game opportunity for your entire army to get an additional D three wounds each. That's so quite, like, yeah, to, a certain, like, to players of a certain age, that's quite evocative because of a particular video game, exactly, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, Dawn of War. Yeah, um, it was they, what happened in Dawn of War. Exactly, which was like, in the game mode, it was absolutely classy, all these models come up, so I think yeah. that would have been much better to do it, as opposed to this way, because, again, that's just a, a once per game. I mean, and D6 is just it. poor. I mean, I'm assuming so, they've played around with it, you might think so, but yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, it's swinging. Like, um, a D6 plus three or D6 or two D6 yeah. or something, but it is very sweet. D6 plus three might be, because you, you, what, you, what, what you would then be doing in one shot is, Waiting until your unit's been um, had taken some serious hammer. Yeah. End of the phase, pop that, and then you know you want at least half the unit coming back, really, don't yeah. you? But, but at most, the, you'll get like three models. Yeah. The free lich guard. Yeah. If that, maybe free lich guard, six warriors. Thanks. You know. Yeah. That's not. That's but like not, you that's pointed out before, like you know, if I was if with in the current system, let's say I have a unit of twenty warriors, you kill five of them in my command phase, I res three. Yeah. In uh, and then in your command phase, I res. I can res up to another three. Yeah. That's the six. The max. That six there in one in one battle round is exactly. is, is it already the same as mm. the maximum you could get from this swingy one shot. Just not great. So it's it's again, what? they really need to address the points costs of law of overlords um, with yeah. resurrection orbs if that's going to be the case because it's yeah. nowhere near but as again, good. Just the creativity. Like where is it? Where's it gone? Why is yeah. it just like yeah. oh yeah, res up. Oh yeah, just that one unit gets these six. Like make it better. Yeah. Make it make it, make it D three plus one. Even that, it's something more creative. You know, someone goes to the entire army. Um, I don't know. Something different. Something different. It, it, yeah, not a lot of thought went into it. And it's, nah. it's just a bit weak now. It is. Um, okay. Right. Moving on, because uh, negative on that one. Don't like it. Um, movement speed. Um, again, mentioned it briefly before, but pretty much the majority of our stuff has got an improved movement. So yeah. back 
undoing what the index doing, which is quite nice. Two yeah. units are remaining, sled five or the minus one. Some but, of your infantry, like you yeah. sustain at five or but whatever. Like, the it? bigger stuff, like the monolith and such, and the the wraith and such, are got their movement back, which is That's lovely. really good. But we need it basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, our next bit of sad news, actually, we've mm-hmm. lost these models. So, um, what's it? Um, Oberyn is gone. Yeah, Valgar Oberyn's gone. With his friend, um, Zandrek. Yeah, Nemesis uh, Zandrek's gone. Yep, all the Necron lords have gone as well. Yep. All the older ones. And who's that again? Uh, Ar- and Rick the Traveller's yes, gone as well. I really liked him. Yeah. I did. Uh, he had a few battle, good battles, and I thought his model's really cool, but... Mo- yeah, I mean, all of those characters, named characters, have got great lore. Yeah. Um, but they were all resin fine cast models, yeah. um, and... I think there was just too many named characters in the codex, maybe, really. There was. There was. But, uh, Necron, I mean, Necron Lords is a funny one. I mean, that model's been out of um, print for a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, it's just strange, because, I mean, they're, I guess, is it all, it's, because are they all overlords, but there are lords in, in Necrons, so it's strange. I mean, there, there were right lords now. in Necron Lord, yeah. and, um, but uh, in, in terms of uh, on, the, on the table, they were really just a cheaper way to access the Resurrection yeah. Orb. Maybe, maybe they're getting rid of that, just so that they can then, in the future, bring more named Necron Lords in. Because most yeah. of the, the, the dudes in there are lord, uh, lords yeah. or, or overlords. Yeah. So maybe they're just getting rid of that so they bring in some new named ones. Yeah, there's the definitely campaign. scope to add a few more in. I think I think um, it's unlikely. I think the uh, we'll, see, we'll see more about where GW wants codexes to be when yeah. we get the World Eaters and Votan mm. codexes because both of those codexes are quite skinny because there's not many units no, they can take. Not. Yeah. So they're due to get more units. Yeah. But I think that will then give us an indication, like say if those codexes sit around the 30-unit mark, mm. that would to me be the the, um, the indications that that's where GW wants a codex to be because we're yeah. still at 47. Yeah. Um, so, we, we know, it's not a tiny codex by any means. No, it's not. Lovely. Well, uh, hopefully we'll do get some new models in the future. But for now, the, yeah, uh, the next one... Stay on one, the nerf train. Yeah, <laughs> the nerf, unfortunately, yeah, it's with downswing here, here now. But, um, yeah, our Lich Guard uh, nerfs are full in effect. So you can no longer take a, a Cryptek in the unit, which yeah. obviously would... Um, and, no uh, more feel, no pain. No more feel, no pains. Along with the minus one to wound is also uh, gone unless... The opponent that's attacking you has a higher uh, toughness, higher strength to your higher toughness, strength yeah. than my toughness. Yes, um, which in most cases you are. So in most cases they will still be wounding on fours, and if they are stronger, then it would then kick them back to a four anyways. So the majority of the time it's still going to be fours, really. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be. Um, yeah, it'll move twos to threes if they're if you're hitting them with really big weapons, yeah. or, or or threes to fours on the and majority. Then, yeah, of weapons. But what it's not going to do is move fives to sixes, which no. is a bit obnoxious. Yeah. Which, yeah. So, but, but quite a big nerf to Lich Guard. Um, um, hopefully, the Lich Guard have maybe got a points reduction in that one. So, again, I, I don't want to say, look, that's a massive nerf. They're unplayable. Let's see what the points they'll need, show. They'll definitely need a points reduction. Yeah. And I'm I'm seriously thinking, again, about investing in some with the war sides rather than the sword and board. Yeah. Sword and board, Lich Guard, unless they're dirt cheap, are going to be dead in this edition. Yeah. So, um, but, the, but the war side ones. War side ones. Know. And again, if we were going to combo that with the movement shenanigans we can do to get them on the board and yeah. get them closer to the, yeah. the end of the And you, unit, can, you can give them a lot better. If Orican's leading, I mean, give them a four up in one. So, you know, there's, there's, there's still options to play those. 100%. So Lich Guard as a whole aren't dead, and we yeah. do need to see the points. But Sword and Board uh, is obviously something that GW is trying to move us away from. That. Exactly. Really is. Um, cool. Um, some warrior nerfs, some fortune coming along here. So the, More the, nerfs. I know. The, the Gauss Reaper back at strength four. Um, that really sucks. There's yeah. not a lot of units out there that's going to kind of get through. It's going to be, you know, fours and a lot of the time fives now. Yeah, you know, oh, oh, the only difference. So yeah, the the, Ga- the the only difference then is that you're getting an extra AP on the on yeah. the shorter range Gauss gun rather than because um, the longer one is uh, the 24 inch one is is no AP and the yeah. 12 inch is one AP. Well, yeah, we'll see how that well, works exactly. Out. We might get some obviously Royal Warden buffs that after you know mm-hmm. maybe lead them. They get extra stuff or yeah, yeah. change them into assault like the kind of does now. Yeah. So we might see some shenanigans of that available. And again, that move that movability, getting them on the board, pop shots off. You know, yeah. we, can take, we we can now take down a lot of Leldar players. And a lot of Imperial Guard players just by moving those low AP guns. Yeah, you get right enough. You put enough shots in, yeah. you, or you you can um, pair them up with things like a plasmancer to yeah. get you know to get uh, lethals and, and stuff like that. There's there's ways yeah. to. Well, you get lethals already. Actually, I mean to get to get crits on fives. I think it is, isn't it? Exactly. So the sixes. Exactly. So yeah, there's there's, there's um the warriors are certainly not dead, but they're going to add. Um, the other thing they've done is you don't uh, warriors got um D six reanimation wounds back per command phase yeah. rather than D3 and, and they've changed was, that they've changed that now what, what's yeah. it, what's it's just gone back to D3 D3 yeah 
It's a bit of a shame. Does it still get anything for being on, a, on, a, on objective? Not as far as I'm aware, no. Do you used to get like D6 or like... You got D6 and then if you're on objective it's D3 plus, plus three, three, I think, yeah, wasn't it? So yeah, so like guaranteed three models, which is like six OC, which is great, minimum. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is lovely. So, um, again, these if warriors are becoming um, slightly less lethal and also yeah. slightly less resilient, there's got to be a points drop, Let's surely. Let, we can yeah. only put fingers crossed to that one. Um, cool, moving on then. Uh, Tomb Blades. Yeah, is, positive news positive here. Positive news, yeah. They've got a, which we found to be incredible in this last... Um, their this double is, yeah, this is a, uh, such a massive um, a ability. Massive ability. Yeah, 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 it's huge in this, in this I, edition. I love what it's called, what, what you've called it. Yeah. The six-inch uh, shooting, uh, shooting, shooting scoot. scoot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> shooting scoots. Yeah, fight, it's also common as fire and yeah. fade or shooting scoot. So it basically means that you can move... In this case, up to six inches after you've after you shoot it in, exactly. in your shooting phase, extra movement. Yeah, always Absolute good. Good. Yeah, um, quite a Keeps fragile unit. So yeah, pop well, out, shoot, pop back, or get you onto an objective or whatever. Yeah. They have um, slight. They had had a slight nerve in that they've got a. Um, there's some. There's a um, an equipment option for them where you can take. Um, you can give them a five plus in one. Is it called? Sh- uh, is it shadow loom or something like that? Yeah, or shield vein. One of the two. Uh, they've got two attack. Yeah, there's one. Yeah. yeah, one of them is one of them is a five plus in one. Yeah. And if they take that, they lose a few inches of movement. So I think yep. they go from twelve to eight inches because they've because it, which kind of feels right because they're taking like extra kit on them yeah. on them. But that's um, uh, to be honest, that's by the by compared to the power of uh, mm. sh- of a six inch shooting scoot. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Yeah, it's very very good. Right, uh, we've got loads more still to get through. So the yes. next one is the scarabs. Um, not much has changed in this one, but they've got their OC back to an extent. So mm. if they are the scarabs, if they're next to a cryptic yes. uh, within six inches, they get one OC. So yes. currently the, wimp, uh, in the index went to zero OC. It really sucked. I didn't see a lot of play with them. So I'm very much happy to see these scarabs back because I love my scarabs. I used to run three, three squads of nine back in the day, yeah. um, which was just a, an ass of meat fest for them to get through, which was lovely. Oh, yeah. um, so I'm very much glad to see that they're back now. Um, and with because they're a canoptic unit, they're going to get all those other bonuses that come with being, you know, all of a sudden they're not off, you know, yeah, then four they, rules, yeah, that you, you, you like four attacks each, yeah, six is a lethal hit, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, um, nice. yeah you can do some serious work with them yeah, now. So the de- scarabs are definitely back on the menu, which yep. is great. Uh, next one is the triarch stalker, yeah, not it's, it's scout eight, yes, no, nice, yes, well, it's got um, mel- it, it has melter weapons on it. So yeah. obviously, the closer you get with those, then you, you need to get into half range to get your melter damage bonus. Yes. So, and they're also not awful in melee. No. no so no. there's um, pins yeah, things, isn't there? And they're not it, points are going to expend uh, going to matter a great deal here as well. Yeah. But if they are priced at the right price point, then you could see you they you know whacking them right on the edge of your deployment zone for an early scooter at the board and, yeah. and melt your opponent's vehicles or yeah. and then charge. Yep. Um, an, an infantry unit or something to tie it up exactly. they're going to see some play I think yeah. and but they the, normally give like the plus one a hit if they've he made a hit to other units as well yes. so getting that up the board to hit a target yeah. for your other guys to come and shoot it's going to be big it's going to be massive yeah. so there's um, uh, that. I, I do I do like a cheeky scout move so I'm, yeah. I'm pleased to see that it'll be good it'll be good and I think just like one more combo that the next one is a massive one is the Dooms the Ark yeah. that weapon has went that weapon is on the rise again right it's up to strength 18 now yeah, that weapon stuff that my lord, I don't yeah. know what the other stats are to it, but currently it's like what D six plus one blast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like that's how many attacks you get. Yeah, hitting on threes. It's hitting on threes, but it's heavy, so if you sit still, it's twos. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean uh, that this is going on what the previous um uh you know stat line was, yeah. uh, but as far as I'm aware, it hasn't changed. No. So yeah, the only thing that's gone has happened is the strength of the weapon's gone up. Yep. Now like minus three know, AP. There's, there are flat. Six damage? Yeah. No. It's four it's damage, I think. Flat four damage. Yeah, yeah four down. damage. But it's, but, uh, it's that's, tasty. That's good. You don't want to... It's dev wounds on a six as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be scary to yeah. see. I'm, I don't want to build and paint them, but I, I reckon I might have to buy another one yeah, just to use Yeah, I've got it. two that I need to get done. Yeah. Um, but the these, yeah, again, points is going to be points dependent, but strength 18 is pretty good. There's quite yeah. a few vehicles around the toughness nine mark, which should be winning on twos now yeah. instead of threes. So I mean, basically, that's the highest toughness in my in my Jakari list. Like even yeah. my even my boats are only toughness nine. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So twos on them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I might make you leave them at home uh, <laughs> when you play the Jakari. I love it. Well, uh, on the theme of still shooting, we've got some really yeah. good ones here. So Lucas destroyers, I love the destroyers. Mm, um, um, there was there was some concern that they might get cut from this edition, wasn't there? Yeah, or at least maybe a revamp in their model. So yeah. I'm glad. I mean, it's a shame they didn't get a revamp, but at the same time, I'm glad that they didn't get yeah. removed. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So the, these ones um the re-roll all hits if the target is on an objective that's tasty that's really good because yeah. again we've got to combo that again with either the extra movement 
um, or you know they can have their cloak, yeah. or again just moving them and teleporting them around and their yeah, shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. that'll be really nice to do. All their hits coming at you because they're right, as currently they're really strong weapons as well. Yeah, they're good, um, good weapons. Yeah, and again straight on the back of that one again the locust heavy destroyers the bigger now, brothers yeah the bigger ones yeah so um again still a massive strength 14 from what i can see minus four ap six damage flat it's just tasty isn't it, it is scary and um, now they've got a, obviously so sorry still they've obviously got a, a built-in re-rolls against the vehicles monsters but i don't know if that's going to change i can see any more information on those ones online currently um, I, I think they get i think they get re-rolls of one against everything now against everything um, but it's uh would have to check that scary but, yeah but they um, are they're they're uh very solid pick. One yeah. shot weapons, as we'll come mm. on to when we talk about dark lances, but oh, one shot weapons oh. are always swingy. They but, are. Uh, if you can, um, if you can, even, yeah, even if you can get, yeah, yeah, there's ways to to try and um, yeah. give yourself the best chance you possibly can. But there is. strength 14, 4 AP, and 6 damage is, is good in this edition. Yes. It's really good. Yeah. Um, back Destroyers, your favorite? Yes. Um, they have the, um, they get the rerolls of one hit back. Yes. So I have to get the hit reroll ones. Uh, always nice, and the uh, we roll all hits on the charge. So again, you know, we're talking about the Annihilation Legion being bad, but once they're in combat, they seem to be maybe scooping up. You know, they're okay. I think it's the the, the disappointment was in the in the synergies that the, the detachment rules offer mm. and the enhancements and strats aren't yeah. amazing. It's yeah, gonna it's it's, it's, it's gonna be difficult to justify running them competitively. But yeah. I, you know, I'm still gonna put some scopex on the board. I, I mean, I've got nine over there yeah. painted built, which I'm very happy with. Which sucks that they're not being used. But it happens. It does. What I haven't seen is any um, sign that the the there was an issue with the scopex lord because um, the scopex lord gave them lethal hits. Yeah. But if you um, their whole the stick was around if you pop the plasma site their scorpex got um devastating wounds mm, so you didn't yeah, really, yeah. they don't really synergize mm -hmm. so and I, i'd like to see them look at that hopefully yeah. they have done but i haven't seen i haven't seen either way no, i'll have to see um, next one on the list which i'm very much looking forward to is the nightbringer mm. got a small buff yeah so it's now their scythe is d6 plus two damage this was so a, this was huge three. i was disappointed Love. to see it remain at d6 from ninth yeah. into 10th because yeah. Because if you're going um, into your sweep attacks and yeah. you're doing loads of attacks, but then you're going up against even against space marines, you're rolling ones and you're not killing. You're not you're killing, not killing space the marine. marine. No. Exactly. But now, this is guaranteed. This is guaranteed terminators. So yeah, you kill a terminator. Like, yeah. Yeah. Three wounds each. You That's can't, scary. You can't kill a wraith because they're four wounds. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, just... <laughs> but no, but I mean, it's, that, it's good for us, though. Yeah, that's it. I, I mean, there's, there, well, there's a lot of damage three in the, in yeah. the game, and um, wraiths having an extra wound is going to end up five at Philippines. It's going to be huge. Is, uh, is that devastating as well, actually? I've forgotten. Uh, six is... got Star God? I kind of want to say yes. It's not. I don't think it is on a sweeping attack. I think it is if no, you do no, the... The strike. Yeah, yeah the yeah, strike, strike mean, is. Course, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Be, uh, that's scary, yeah. isn't it? You know, eight, eight wounds coming at you. Ooh, horrible. Um. But yes, almost at the end, yeah, the Wraiths now, as we mm. just briefly mentioned. So these got a massive glow up. So yeah. some really good combos that we can see with these ones. So Wraiths, again, are Canoptic. So again, those abilities that we're going to get later on mm -hmm. the free uh, extra rerolls is going to be amazing. Yep. They have four wounds now. Yep. They have a combo with the Technomancer. You can now give them a five up feel no pain. Yes. And which... I, I'm really interested to find out whether they techno, like you touched on this right at the very beginning. At the moment, the an overlord mm. give, can give you plus one to hit. I'm wondering yep. if in the Canoptic, did, if a, if a, uh, the Necron cryptic, character, if a Cryptic yeah. can give you plus one to hit, that's good. That would be big. Because if the Doom but again, even if it isn't, that's still very strong. It's still really strong because they've got that built in as well. I think it's like a five up um, or four up invulnerable save four, as well. Four up invulnerable, yeah. So, so hey, that's, that's going to be really good. It almost just seems like wherever the Technomancer goes, that's like the best unit to use basically yeah we were talking about this um off camera earlier and and uh it, the technomancer was one of the mvps in in the co in the codex yeah. in ninth and it seems to be that it's shaping up the same way in 10th yeah. doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah like mm -hmm. what, what the units that can synergize well yeah. with the technomancer are going to be the ones that people take it, it's a shame that there's three other um cryptex that you can use it but, <laughs> but no one uses them. yeah we, we'll talk um, about it more when we get into the codex review but the plasmancer is is probably well He's not the least used because that would be the t the psycho mancer because no one ever uses him. <laughs> um, yeah, one time, one time, he's yeah, used that yeah. character. No, it, um, him he's also very fiddly to build. But the uh, yes, the yes. plasmancer giving you crits on critical hits on yeah. fives. I think we're going to see. Um, there was a. There's already been some talk about combos with him in certain um, detachments where, with um, 
10 immortals with tesla yeah so where you can you end up with like 20 odd hits from 10 shots uh, <laughs> and then um, there's a strat to pop devastating wounds and um, which in that detachment is a battle tactic stratagem mm. so even though it's two cp your overlord can give you it for free nice. so all of a sudden 10 10 immortals with an overlord and a plasmancer is pushing out some Popping serious around the board. damage That'll be Popping around the board yeah. as well i mean you're looking at something like um 10 to 12 devastating wounds yeah. in that combo without even not the normal wounds that you're going to do yeah. as well so really you, could, nice. you could probably delete a lot of um you know like 20 chaff or whatever yeah. you know it's not going to be an issue really good um so there's yeah. Yeah, yeah it's good to see in a way i kind of expected no less from from necron facebook because it's always uh, there's always a lot of arguing <laughs> on there cesspool. yeah yeah <laughs> i mean it's not it's not too, too bad in terms of cesspool but it just there is it, it is very on brand because there is always a civil war like there is. there's a disagreement about there's, everything there's like, somebody could open the window and say the sky is blue and somebody else would say no it yeah. isn't yeah uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, they really would. Yeah, skinwalker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Get 'em>. yeah. <laughs> um, yes, uh, obviously Technomancer as well. Obviously, briefly talk about them just now. But yeah. again, the whenever they lead a, a unit, which is obviously most likely going to be the race here now, they give them the five up wheel up here yeah, to the big. squad. It's big. God, it's big. Um, the they do lose lone operative, which mm. didn't, so it should, and the the only way this was being used was. Um, if you you get you would take a technomancer on his own, give him the sovereign coronal, which I yeah, think is also which like an aura, yeah, which then it? It, yeah, which was an aura of leading units around you. So he would kind of babysit the um your back your big yeah, um anti tank in the back destroyers line, destroyers yeah, or something that, like that. Yeah, 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 very nice. But yeah, and uh, last but not least is uh, crypto thralls. Crypto thralls, the yes. bane the bane of everybody's life who yeah, plays against yeah, Lich Guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Steve of Biggin, don't want to shut the ground, right? Yeah, They've, uh, remove their feel no pain. So yes. I'm wondering what their combo is now going to be like. Um, they get an extra wound in in uh, to kind of replace that, but they're going to have to. I mean, they were sixty points for a pair. Yeah. They're going to have to come back. Yeah, back if down. they've lost that ability, like, that's yeah. massive. Yeah. That's the one that if you, in theory, they should come back down at least twenty because yeah, yeah. enhancement is currently twenty points. Yeah, they, they, on, so. they shouldn't be more than uh, more than uh, th- 30, 30, 30, points, 30 points for a pair, yeah. something like that. If um, that. Yeah, because they're not they don't do anything. They're not very mm. good in combat or at shooting. Yeah, they have a six inch range gun, which isn't a pistol, so you can't. Yeah, so when yeah, are you yeah. going to fire that? Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, so the the reason they were in um, those lich guard blobs was to make them more resilient. Yes, and, and I can un- totally understand why. Um, you know, some anyone that's played against lich guard bricks with crypto thralls in knows how bad it is. Yeah, they're actually pretty strong without them. Mm. They're not bad without no. them, as you no. demonstrated this weekend. Yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, I can, I, need them. No, I can kind of, <laughs> I can kind of see why they've done this. Yeah, for but you, sure. you probably, unless they drop the points down to make them very attractive, you're just not going to see them anymore. Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, that's kind of all of the units that's out there. Then that's yes. been changed. Um, top losers for you, Dan. What are your thoughts? Uh, of- I'm not sure about Scorpex. Top losers definitely Lich Guard. Lich Guard. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we're sad to see that the um the, the names, some of the name gone. characters have gone. Yes, absolutely. Reanimator's a big loser, losing that yep. aura from twelve to three. I, I will die on this hill, but six inches was where they should have gone with that. Yep. Yep. Um, Crypto Thrall's a big loser. Yep. Um, and that's basically it. Yeah. I think uh, just for me, really, the reanimator going down from 12 to 3, that's yeah, too much. Just too much. Too much. And it make, at least make it 6. Um, again, and just overall, the Annihilation Legion just being, you know, small. Like, yeah. It's just, I it's mean, not gonna be I would like to think, screen. yeah, I'm clinging on to the hope that maybe it's when we yeah. actually get the codex and read through it that, the, that, that something will click, the light bulb will come on and we'll yeah. go, actually, maybe we could try this. Yeah. But at the moment, yeah. it doesn't look like that at all, does it? For me, top winners, I've got yes. the uh, Wraiths, absolutely Wraiths unreal. Are back, yes. Yeah, again, wherever that Technomancer goes, the Wraiths, you know, yeah. it just, of course, going to do well. Catan, absolutely love the Catan. Um, I've, I've loved all three of them. I've got all, I've got all three of them, plus the Transcendent. So I'm really happy to bring mm. those ones back to the field. And then the Doomsday, like, I've got one and I want more because that Strength 18 gun, that's going to scare on yeah, a lot it's of gonna people. Yeah, terrify people. I need some, some night, night players are, are getting too frisky. And yeah, well, I mean, we talk about yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. But there's, the, it does seem to be. I, uh, I mean, I think actually there's a reason for this. But our local meta is very night heavy, yeah. so the bigger, we definitely need some bigger guns yeah. or some uh, anti vehicle. Lovely. Um, me, I'm a big fan of. Um, we've just touched on this, but scarabs, scarabs yeah. are definitely playable again, particularly in that canoptic detachment. Yeah, I love scarabs. I'm really excited to try a triax, at least one triax stalker, just to see how that goes. In mm-hmm. terms, of now they've got that scout ability, can yeah. they provide? Um, and a bit of early game threat that either nets me a good trade out in points mm. or um, just simply forces my opponent to have to deal with that and takes some, yeah. you know, takes focus away from other things while nice. I march my Scorpex up the board. Yeah. Um, well, it'd probably be right. being noticed. Be right now, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love it. And uh, Team Blades, as I said, um, yeah. um, we're, we're both massive fans of the shooting scoot, so that's a big glow up for them, definitely. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. 
Well, they're all of the changes to the uh, obviously the codex that's coming out. Yes. Um, I love them. Let us know what your thoughts are in the, in the comments as well. Yeah, give us a shout out. What you're looking mm-hmm. forward to um, getting your hands on in terms of new minis, new, yeah. what, which detachments you're going to run first. Let us know. Yeah. And before we move on to the next session, we've got a couple of channel updates as well that we're going to be doing. Yes. So we're going to be looking at um, spreading, our, spreading our wings, if you will. Doing a couple of different little segments. Yeah, we were, we were trying to keep this on the wrap, and then another channel, which is much bigger than ours, has, has announced they were going to do the same thing. So we wanted Makes to complete sense because yeah. it's really good to do. Yes, but, uh, it's a great idea. Yeah, it is that's a good why idea. Two, two, two channels have yeah. had it. But we wanted to come clean now so people don't think that we're just copying. Yeah. So we're going to be doing the book club. Um, basically, we're going to be looking at some of the um, Black Library um, books that are out there. Yes. Um, first one we're going to look, be looking at is The Thousand Sons. One of our friends picked it. Um, so we're going to be doing a book, book review with himself. Um, he's Alex. He loves Thousand Sons, so he'll bring all the insights, all the knowledge about the Thousand Sons. Yeah, in. Alex is one of our friends who's very hot in the rules, but he's also incredibly knowledgeable. Yeah, on, knowledgeable <laughs> on the on the law. Yeah, um, looking forward and, to that. Yeah, and he's uh, so yeah. We're looking forward to running the Black Library Book Club. We'll do the the first one will be out soon, and then the idea is that uh, you guys will have the opportunity to uh, kind of read along together and be part of that. So. We'll announce which book we're going to read. We'll yeah. give you a few weeks to read it and give us your thoughts back, and then we'll incorporate that into the into the episode. I think it's just a good way to kind of get back involved in books. Really, there's so much content out there. The horror heresy is still ongoing, yes, and such, so yes. just getting involved with it, I think it's going to be absolutely. Yeah, class. there's there's a huge depth of uh, of Black Library to go at, and yeah. um, we're very keen to like Alex is a good example of this. Like I said, he's very passionate about those. He's picking, yeah. we're gonna we're asking people to pick basically their favorite books so that they yeah. can um, give us those insights into what you know why it's so good. So it'll just be a way for us to get new people on, you know, on the podcast, yeah. on the show, see what it's like. Yeah, it's not just going to be us two and occasional visits from Jess yeah. and Dog anymore. You will, <laughs> yeah, you might be seeing some Fresh new faces. Yeah, new faces. Yeah, so we'll be getting, doing that. I think the plan that for the next, we're gonna, that'll be coming out in the next two weeks' time. Um, don't hold me to that because I've got lots of stuff to edit. Yeah, definitely um, before Christmas. Definitely before Christmas yeah. time. We're looking at war rules as well. So we put a little taster out there a couple of weeks back and it uh, seemed to do okay. I was very happy with it. Um, it's mainly going to be rules that we've gotten wrong during our time playing little yeah, tournaments. As, as we've gone through 10th, it's, it's those kind of moments where the, the common mistakes that players make in terms of, um, of, in terms of misinterpreting a rule and, and just to help you uh, make sure that you play it correctly. Play it right. And also to and understand... Get the most benefit yeah, from it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How to get the most benefit. What, um, so yeah, we're looking forward to that as well. Yeah. So a couple of extra... Extra things going on. Uh, the podcast will remain for those that, that are enjoying it. Thank oh, you very much. Yeah, um, we're still going to be doing this because we love it, and that's Definitely. why we started in the first place. Cool. Um, but yeah, we are. We're going to be branching out a little bit and, and trying some new things. Yeah, spread the uh, drumming out there. See what's like. Yeah, see what yeah. lands. Because it's always good to try new things. So yes. yeah, stick around. And then up next, we've got the unit review. So let's get cracking with this episode's unit review, and this week we have chosen chosen. Hey. Uh, <laughs> had to get a pun in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, dude, had the pun count in. was very low. Should try and squeeze one in whenever <laughs> we can now. <laughs> Every episode. Uh, for those that don't know, chosen is a unit in the Chaos Space Marine Codex, and the reason why I've chosen them this week is because they've used they are used extensively in Chaos mm. Space Marine lists, but they're also a very key part of how um, Manny Chima won the Warhammer World Championships. Yes, yes. Uh, they're a very cost-effective unit and they're very, very versatile. Mm. Um, one of the, if we can do a quick comparison, 10 Legionnaires, which is the Chaos Space Marines, basically the Marines, if you like, they're mm. 180 points. 10 Chosen are only 220 points. So there's a 40-point difference, but you yeah. get a lot, a lot more play a for those more, extra 40 points. A lot more buffs I think you can put on them as well, can't oh, you? Yeah, yeah. Incredible. I mean, I mean, stat line wise, they have one less OC because they're not battle line, obviously. So they've got mm. OC one rather than um, legionnaires of OC two. Yeah, but they have an extra wound to start with, so they've got three wounds to chew through. Um, the data sheet ability is also super strong, What's so they that? can they can advance, shoot, and charge. See that again? The tenth, you need movement. Yes, movement, and then being able to shoot, movement, Fantastic. and still being able to kill stuff. Yeah, exactly. and they are very killy. Yeah, it's called chosen marauders, and it means that they're they're very good for doing secondaries, but mm. they are they are super killy. Get them on the board quick. Nice. They have the, the army rule for Chaos Space Marines is Dark Pacts, so you can give them lethal hits or sustained hits each turn, and that's in each phase as well yeah. in shooting or melee. Yeah. What you have to do is you do a um, you do a leadership check at the end of the phase, mm. and if you roll equal to or above your leadership, you're fine, and if you roll less than your leadership, then you take mortal wounds for doing oh. your Dark Pacts. Oh, right. like the Chaos Gods give you this power, but sometimes they but take... You can re-roll those a majority of the time, though, can't they? Uh, I believe packs. I don't know, um, but it's uh, the. I mean, I'm assuming it's the same as the CP reroll. Yeah, no, yeah, sure so no reason can. why I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I think when they're led by a character or a sorcerer, um, the game that we played uh, just in the recent tournament, mm. they were being able to reroll it because of the character in there. That's right. Yes, so, yes, you're yeah. right. 
Uh, damage output for them is actually really good. Um, mm-hmm. uh, they, you've, a lot of the time they run um, either with a sorcerer, as you said, or a chaos lord. Yeah. Because a lord can, um, the same way as a necron overlord or a space wing captain can give them a strat for free, uh, they, the strats, the free strats that they can use um, for the, with the chosen is mm-hmm. either full rerolls to hit and wound or, or the equivalent of armor of contempt. So they reduce all income in AP by yeah. one. Oof, so you, options yeah, are just you've fantastic. Got, you've got the lethality the and the, and the yeah. resilience there, yes. Um, on top of that, as three wound models, they can do something that Terminators can't do. They can go in rhinos, mm. um, and which uh, mm. so rhinos are very obviously very cheap uh, transports. Yeah. And the way Manny Chima uses them in his list, he ran um, three units of five, along with three units of five legionnaires uh-huh. and, and three rhinos, and was then mixed, kind of mixing and matching. Right. Um, he's using the lords, he's like uh, uh, as we were saying before, so they can get the free strats. Nice. So the rhino can drop one squad off to go and sit on an objective or do an action, and then the other one can sit tight, and so it's protected until it needs to pop out. Nice. It gives you crazily good board control and um, chosen punch very well above their weight in terms of uh, trading. Mm. Mm-hmm. So for those that don't know what, what we talk about, trading is a competitive term and it's, basic, it's very simple. It's basically the concept that if you're going to fire your unit into something else, you need to kill units that are worth more points than your unit is because your yep. unit will get killed in return because it's exposed. So trading is about trading up is about making sure that say say in this case you've got a unit that's two hundred and twenty points. Yeah. You want to be trading up to kill a unit that's say two hundred and fifty, three hundred or more. Yeah. And they yeah. can do that very easily. Yeah. So there's an awful lot of um of flexibility in play yeah. and how they work. Uh they are um absolutely uh, one of the best units in the um in the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Mm. And I will eat my cloth cap if they do not get a point nerf in yeah. in in the yeah. next uh, data slate I, in January. Yeah, when I first when I had my lich guard with, with the uh, the war sides, I remember getting chosen from Lewis, and he just demolished an entire yeah. squad. And yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, these are horrible to see when they when they're fully buffed. Stay away if you can. Yes, and then one of the reasons um, I think I mean the Chaos Space Marine Codex. We talked we've talked about this before. It's a really rich codex. There's lots of synergies. Um, people are working out the best ways to play yeah. them now. And it's but chosen are still one of the reasons why they are one of the highest um mm. factions in the meta. Yeah. Which yeah. has been which is consistent with the recent meta watch which just came out. Yes. Absolutely is. Um so uh, the the uh, Stu Black, the lovely Stu Black came back onto the TV screens uh, with the uh, Warhammer um community and uh it, it gave us a quick rundown of what's been going on there. And largely, I don't think I really want to dwell too much on this because uh, the the general gist of it is not much has changed. Yeah, uh, yeah. Eldari is still above the Goldilocks zone, which is the forty five to fifty five yes. percent win rate zone. They're on fifty seven percent. Yep. Everybody else is in the Goldilocks zone, apart from Jakari, are are one um, percentage point out at the bottom mm. of forty four. The only major change is Black Templars are doing very well. Um, the El- Leagues of Votan and Black Templars are both on win rates of fifty five percent. Yep. Uh, so right at the top of the Goldilocks zone. Uh, Chaos Space Marines are just below that 54. Orcs were above the Goldilocks zone in the last meta watch, but they are now back down to 53%, mm. which is a reflection of just, I think, people, competitively, people just working out how to deal yeah. with them again. They just met their better melee armies out there now, isn't they? Yeah, they were, well, the Black Templars is a good, is a very good op- um, example. Um, one of the things I did want to talk uh, that Stu Black did highlight was um, he was talking a lot about internal balance, which is something that actually we predicted you and me were discussing on a previous podcast. So because most of these factions are effectively balanced, they're all mm. sitting in a Goldilocks zone, his his team's job now is to internally balance the codexes. And what that means is making all of those non-playable units playable. Yeah. So like Scorpex that we were talking about earlier, how do they find a way to make Scorpex uh, playable in, in, in this edition? Not the ones that just like completely overtake the... Yeah, to not, to make, not to make them OP, it's but like, to make oh, them... Look, they're yeah. on the same level as yeah. these are uh, exactly. 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 So, and at the moment, every index or codex is the same. There are certain there's, there are certain units like we just touched on with chosen. Yeah, auto pick. You know, in mm. a in a chaos space marine list. Yeah, obliterators are probably auto picks in a chaos yeah, space marine list. Are there units in a chaos space marine list that are not getting taken? Why is that, and how do they fix that? Mm-hmm. And that that to me would be fantastic because if you're looking at codexes of between like say thirty, and most of them are between thirty and fifty unit yeah. choices within there. Mm. If if the same ten are only being taken competitively, um, if we can expand that to take yeah. those other twenty as well, twenty or thirty, that would be awesome. It would, it would. And I really hope they don't like decrease the ones that are working well. They'll be like, oh, those guys are being uh, used moderately. Let's nerf them. Like, no, don't do that. Let's just 
Don't nerf them into the ground. Exactly. More, yeah, we'd rather, yeah, we'd rather see the poor units brought up rather than yeah. the good units nerfed too exactly. much. I mean, there are some cases like Chosen are too cheap, let's be honest. They they, they're going to get a point to nerf. What they can yeah. do, but, but I don't because see they're stacking all the buffs on top yes. of them though, as well. So. Uh, yeah, and I don't want to see them uh, yeah, rendered unplayable. The yeah. yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, um, internal balance is going to be something, if they can keep the, the meta balance like that, mm. the, number one, that's amazing because it's the best balance we've had and, and that I can yeah. remember. But also, it then opens up this opportunity to really um, get deep into those codexes yeah. and let's use those units that, yeah. that are not being used. And I think it's good to highlight. We've briefly touched on it before, but it's good that the meta hasn't changed as much. Yeah. You know, it's good that there's not a big army that's overtaken oh, Eldar. It's, it's, like so, it's so they nice. They are being reined in. It's so nice compared to that roller coaster of ninth, oh, isn't goodness, it? Yeah. yeah. Up and down, up and down. Yeah. I felt sick by yeah. the end of it. Um, but yeah, 10th, it's looking crisp. I mean, again, Drakari went up by the 1%, so they're sitting on 44%. Who would take them to a tournament? Uh, we don't know. But we, 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 might, we might talk about that in a second. Yeah, let's talk um, about that now. Um, you want. Yeah, should we move on to it straight away? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I said, the Meta Watch is looking, the, the best thing to say it's, is well done, GW. It's, it's looking healthy, good. It's right? looking very yeah. healthy. Um, a couple of, some more tweaks to the top and bottom. There will be some nerfs to those that are near the top. There will yep. be some busts to those near the bottom. And then we'll see where that gets us. Definitely. But overall, they're doing a fantastic job. They are. They are. So, yeah. So, obviously, we mentioned it before, but we went to a recent tournament, uh, a doubles tournament down at the uh, West, Lo- uh, West Lockman Wild Links Club. Yes. Really good. Really well hosted as always. I think it's been our third time we've been there now. Yeah. This is the third yeah. tournament uh, and my third podium place. It is. It is. And a little cheeky thing that you said to me at the end was, uh, <laughs> we got a little certificate because we came third yeah. in it. And uh, walk- Dan walked up to me and goes, oh, Jack, you want this, mate? I've already got two of them. It's like, yeah, shut the <laughs> Fuck off, Dad, all right? All right, I get it, I get it, all right? You're popular, you won, you're good, all right? Uh, Thanks anyways. But yes, so, I mean, it was the first double tournaments that they've that they ran as well, which was very smoothly ran again. Everyone turned up, good day. All of their events run like clockwork, yeah. um, really, very well organised. Um, the one gripe that we had, which others had as well, was um, for the two tournaments running yes. now, one of the, um, they only play three games over the course of the day, which is great, yep. but one of the um, um, mission rules mission for each rules. one of those yep. was um, the, the servo Servo skulls. skulls. Yes. Which, uh, if any of you have seen this in the um, ta- in the in the deck Leviathan deck, it's one yep. where you get to move the objectives that you control it, back and forth. And I think it's a shame because it is actually a fun, actually like mission to play because it's different. It's like you're not, oh, yeah. you're not just moving on to a thing and like right, I'm here, I must stay here. It's like oh no, I must move this and move up and constantly kind of fight for the middle or fight for wherever it moves to. But I think for me, it's like it's too much to do, especially in a tournament kind of thing. Because I feel like I've got so much stuff that I've got to remember and do yes. and having to do this extra thing on top of it is something, I don't know, my brain doesn't really keep up with it so much. And- no, I, I struggled. I mean, it was the very first time I played it was when it was in the singles tournament um, uh, that we played in, that we yeah. went to a few a few months ago, a couple of months ago. Mm. And I found it really hard going because yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I didn't even well, know. It, yeah. I, didn't everyone get it wrong? Like, Because uh, oh, yeah. you can move, because like, from when, the way I read it, you can move the objective at the end of each turn depending on who's controlling it, you also score at the end of the turn. So again, it's it's completely different from the other ones where you score at the start of your turn. So the this is, yeah, so this is, again, and this is one of the reasons why it's complicated. So yeah. rules as written, mm-hmm. y- if you control that objective in your turn, at the end of your turn, you can move it. Yep. If you control it at the end of your opponent's turn, you can move it. Yep. But you only score points at the end of your turn. Exactly. Um, yes. But it's, it's yeah, it, it's complex. It causes an awful lot of, yeah. of extra admin. It slows the game down. It's, it not, it's not a great... I- mission for tournaments and it's uh, the points are uh, cumulative so yeah. if you get it into your um deploy uh, the opponent's deployment zone you get it for if it's within 12 and if it's within um six and if it's in your deployment so you get the oh, eight, stacks. six and three points right. each one so you can score so yeah it's really okay. yeah it's it's honestly it's crazy everyone forgets that um something that i was reminded of that we could have totally took advantage of is the mission says if you control the objective Mm. You can move it. But mm-hmm. well, we had sticky. Yeah. We had sticky units. We could have moved one of our sticky units onto it, stickied the objective, and then I could have used my Lich Guard to then tie up other units. Uh, and yeah, then since we control yeah. it, we could just keep on. No units are on it, but we can still just keep on moving it because yeah, we, we control it. it. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was a, such a good strat that someone told us. Yeah, um, we can think about if it comes up again next time. But we, it was it was flagged at the, with the yeah. taunt, taunt organizers, and that's a, that's the I know we've just ranted about it, but it's because it, it's uh, it's a it's minor so gripe to compared remember. to yeah, oh yeah, it, it's a, it's a, that was the the only tiniest criticism that yeah. we had of an overall fantastic event. Oh, again, it was so fun. I'm yeah. sure we dive straight into the, the game. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. 
pretty tall about it. So game one, um, it was, a, again, very fun game. We played against uh, Death Guard and Chaos Knights. Yeah, I mean, we should probably say what we took. Um, so yeah, mm, I, um, Very briefly then, yes. Yeah. We took, um, uh, I took my Jakari yeah. and you brought your Necrons. Necrons, I mean, what's it? Like 48% and then your... 44%, 44% win rate. Yeah. Honestly, I can't believe I got paired with this game. <laughs> <laughs> I carried you. What are you talking about? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, Wait, my, I've been on a work on my shoulders. I'm huge <laughs> carrying our team. Um, but no, basically, I we both kind of depending on each other because I was primarily there just to soak up as much damage as possible and get in the way. And you were there to basically shoot and kill. And it was I, a, yeah, it was a last hurrah for the Lich Guard Death Bricks, wasn't it? Because oh. yeah, because it, it, it was going to be the last chance we get to play uh, them. It to be was honest. exactly, if the, especially the way it's currently going. Like, obviously, I'm going to lose my you know feel up feel no mm. pains and the minus one wound. So I think this is probably the last hurrah yeah. of of my Lich Guard, and I think they're doing really well personally. I think they're, oh, they were amazing. Tanked yeah, a lot of units. So, um, anyways, though, game one there was Death Guard versus Chaos Knights. Um, quite a close game, actually, wasn't it? It was, it was. It was the first two or three turns were really close, and yeah. then we were able to pull away after that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it, it was just it, the sheer it felt firepower. Like a, yeah, it felt yeah. like a close game. It was those. Um, I think it was that the wombo combo that they had, where the knights, because um, it was chaos knights. They are if you're if you're less than half, if you're less than starting strength, you mm. have to take a battle take shock battle shock test. Yeah, in you, that, yeah, that was scary because obviously my lichcon as soon as I lost one, I was like right, battle shock, and then. It was so easy for me to lose units because obviously the Death Guard were then giving me the minus, um, like the minus one toughness. Yeah, they've got this and, contagion range where they give yeah. you, yeah, they can reduce your toughness, reduce your your um, uh, weapon skill, mm. ballistic skill, stuff like yeah. that. So it was the they, Death Guard and Chaos Knights um, synergized very well, they were. quite better than um, Jakarta yeah. <laughs> did. But yes. we were able to, we were able to hang on yeah. and um, and pull away in the final turns. I we, think for us, the final turns, I think the secondaries were just on our side. Yes. like they got a couple of hard ones that yeah. they had to get, and they, I don't think they could have scored them. Like tempting target, whenever you get that, and you've got two blobs of Lich Guard. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's going to be a struggle, away. isn't it? Yeah, 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 it's horrible for them. And um, luckily, we were getting those simple ones where it was just like you know. If I, if I was capture around post, but I was kind of already there. Yeah. Uh, defend off your stronghold. We were getting the, the easy ones to score. Those I mean, I easy thought we points. played we played a good game, but it was uh, the lads that we played were really nice lads. Yeah, it was a quite yeah. a, quite um Jonathan and Dan, I believe yeah. the names were lovely yes. people. Yeah. It was quite a chilled uh, introduction, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So yeah, really that fun. was that game was good. Really fun game. Game two. Um, I think we maxed did we max out in that we game? Did. We yeah. did max out. They got a, it was a hundred to like sixty eight or fifty eight, something right, like that. Right. So again, really good game. Good. Yeah. Uh, game two. Yes, Chaos Space Marines versus Chaos Knights. Yes, again, oh, uh, combo, combo this again, one. very um, strong synergies, yeah. and the damage output for Chaos Space Marines is pure filth. I didn't even realize <laughs> that it was a squad of four obliterators that were just, just almost yeah. tearing through my entire Lich Guard yeah, blob, and yeah. I was getting a bit worried. Yeah, because the, they just managed to hang on, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they they, um, they jumped straight. This was the Servo Skulls one, so luckily yes. we, we clawed a few points back near the end. Um, we this one really came down to to a couple of dice rolls and a couple of it was like luck again. So um, one of the players uh, we played Alyssa and Alexander and yes. Alyssa I played um, was a Tyranids player yep. who I played in the last tournament mm. um, where I didn't cheat. <laughs> oh yeah, that was it, wasn't um, it? Yeah. Yes. And uh, that game came down to uh, last dice roll whether she yep. could kill. She needed to kill one mm-hmm. uh, Cabalite warrior to claim yep. an objective and she couldn't. So I won by a couple of points. Yeah, this one we lost by three points. So she she got a revenge, but uh, <laughs> it was uh, it, it 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 was a couple of dice rolls yeah. where um our, my dark lances whiffed against an, a, a knight. If we took the knight out, um might, might have made the difference. Yeah, because it would have given that knight then was able to go on and, and rampage through most yeah, of our yeah, most yeah, yeah. you know large chunk of our um, point scoring ability yep. if you like. And secondaries just weren't kind to us. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not to detract from Alexander and Alyssa. They played a very strong game. Oh, yeah, it was really good. But, you know, that was the hardest game we had. Probably. Oh, straight away. You know, if I think it was all down to turn one. If we got turn one, yeah. my flayed ones are kind of already well, there to push them this further. Is, this is a massive mm-hmm. other reason why I don't like servo skulls. I'm going to get back on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you um, really but, drive but it, it over, turn, you? turn one's massive. You know, yeah. if you get turn Especially one. with servo yeah, skulls. Yeah, yeah. Turn, turn one with servo skulls is huge because yeah. you, you, you're immediately putting your opponent on the back foot yeah. if you can move them. Because luckily, I don't know if anyone knows, but I had my flayed ones basically mm. uh, uh, infiltrate Fault, yeah. up. So basically, I was already on the objective. Yes. So come the end of turn one, I could move them there six inches, and that's immediately that's two turns of them not scoring yes. those two yes. primaries. That would have made would have the had difference. To move them, yeah. and then not still not score anything. 
and then and then move them three. again to score. Yeah. So basically, it would have only been there. But two we would have three. We, we would have scored. We were we were able to push them back in the final turn. Yeah, final, but if final we'd three. had turn one and put them on the back foot, they yeah. wouldn't have scored as much primary. And we would have it, won. Exactly. So basically, it comes down to who gets the first turn yeah. roll off. For which that is, one, which is no game should come down to who gets turn no. one. No. Um, but as I said, that's not to detract from they they played a very good game. Oh, that night that just ran into the middle. I was just like, oh, yeah, like this. Yeah. and then I lost like I think it was like, like eight lich guard, yeah, about, or like uh, six or seven lich guard, and I was like, oh goodness, I was like, Dan, can you just shoot that? Yeah, like, please, like that. I need you to so take the, him out. The first game we played, um, the the uh, the Chaos Knights player John had um, one big knight and yeah. some little dogs. I think we ignored he, that big one. We, we? He, well, he kept it at the back, and we because yeah. I was we've been like talking before the game because we knew we were paired against them. I was like, if we if he brings that, like, if he if we can persuade mm. him to keep that at the back, yeah. we're in with a fighting chance. If he yeah. brings it forward, we're screwed. Yeah, yeah. And then and then we play a second game. They just they did exactly the same. Yeet Turn the big one, night. it was yeah. like in the middle. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was okay. like, Dan, I was like, yeah. I need you to kill him. <laughs> if you're yeah. done, we're I mean, we had, we had, I'm going to say charitably to myself, very mixed results with the dart lances. Oh um, god, because they, you know, dart lances are one shot weapons. Um, but if 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 you hit, if you can roll to hit. And you should be because you're getting re-rolls with the with the Jukari army rule. Yeah. But if you can roll to hit and then get your wounds through and, yeah. and your opponent doesn't spike the saves, you can take down pretty yeah. much anything. Yeah. Because you're wounding the little knights on threes and the big knight on fours. Yeah. So, you know, realistically, it, uh, there's nearly 20 dart lances in that list. You should yeah. be able to pop these things. Yeah. A lot of the time, it just it wasn't happening. <laughs> but we had one turn where I think I put something like 18 wounds on the, yeah. on the big knight. And I was and like, that, ah, that, finally. That yeah. allowed, I think it was my lich god that then finished it off. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I was able to get them through. My goodness, yeah. thank goodness yeah, for that. Because yeah. needed to get through him. Just so that was, it was a super forward. tough game. Yeah. Um, because again, that was that one more combo that really worked for them was the knights, the chaos ones, especially they forced the battle shock test. test so yeah. what happened was when I even when I destroyed that knight, I still didn't own the objective because I failed my yeah. battle shock. Yeah. So it was again a good by them by yeah. forcing that on them because yeah. I couldn't then still move that objective, which still scored them points at the end of the turn because I couldn't move it. So boom, they were scoring points by the end of their turn. Yeah. It was just unreal. And uh, um, so we did lose that game. It was very yeah. narrow. Um, I've, I've said my piece about server schools and I won't say any more, <laughs> but um, they, they, that duo actually Scott. went on to win the, did. the tournament yeah. all, all so outright. So, that's the yeah. second tournament I've been in where ever I've lost a game, it's always been to the person that won the tournament. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I am, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to take that as a win for yeah. me. Yeah, very good. And uh, you can, you're going to see a theme developing here because guess what was in <laughs> was in the lists for uh, yeah. the game three? More chaos. More so, chaos. Yeah, Knights. actually, I'm sitting, reading it there now. We versed the well, all of chaos. Well, yeah, it was just a, just a traitor fest. Just wasn't a traitor it? fest yeah. for us, honestly. So yeah, it was chaos space marines in the last one. Honestly, chaos no, demons. Chaos demons in the last one and chaos knights. And this one again uh, went down to basically a one dice roll, and which actually this time went in our favour, didn't it? So we won. Was it seven? We won by three points. It was yeah, like seventy six to seventy three or something like that. Good players. Um, and basically, as a it went, it was your overlord. They yeah. they drawn area denial. Yeah, your overlord is in the middle of the board, like he's all that's left of, oh, the, of the yeah. lich guard units. Yeah, and he, and all they had to do, if they killed him, they would have got area denial. They would have. And, yeah, and he just refused to it, die. Well, didn't they he? did kill him eventually. Yes. Um, again, I felt so bad though because yeah. like yeah, he put so much shooting power into those lich guard. And if I'm honest, the lich guard should have died a lot sooner. He put like. Well over eight hundred points. I think in, it was in so, the fringe of Yeah, it was. They were trying to ignore the lich guard, which is the right way to play. But it got to a point where he needed the middle of the board he, to score his points yeah. or their points. Lee, yeah. Lee and Barry, uh, a great, a great uh, oh, couple of guys yeah. actually who had a good game. Probably, but they, every, every time I go, the, the best painted army that's there. Whenever oh I've yeah, seen them, Lee, Lee's, Lee's incredible mm. painter. Yep. Um, but yeah, they, uh, they, the Barry sort of had a little smile and he turned to me and he was, and I'm like, "What are you going to do this turn?" He's going, "We're going to try and achieve the impossible. Yeah. We're going to try and kill the Lich Guard." Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, because he going into it, he knew. Yeah. He was like, "I can't kill them. Yeah. I'm going to ignore them." And then again, as you see, got to that point where it's like, "No, I, I, I need, need to kill, to kill them. them." So he, and popped, he was just like, "Yeah." He had, we hadn't touched his knights, so he had a thousand nah. points of knights. He, he popped strats to give them sustained four of them sustained hits. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and emptied the guns of five knights into the lich guard and didn't kill the whole blob. Didn't kill the whole charged blob. Charged them and didn't kill the whole blob. One left on wound. Yes, one left on yeah. one wound. And then he charged in and uh, your overlord, you saved them all, and your overlord put six wounds on the knight. <laughs> and he sat there and he, he was, was like, like, he's like, I knew I shouldn't have charged, yeah. but I had to. You had I'm to. Like, no, you had mate, to try. It, was, it was the right call. Uh, Nick. Yeah, and you did not rub it in at all by singing, I'm still standing. <laughs> <laughs> got, the, got the hips swinging. <laughs> I had to, I had to. Yeah. I heard someone, it was another two, one of our friends, was also it? singing songs. Uh, Andy and I, it was um, not Andy, it was uh, Robin, Robin and Alex. Robin and Alex, yeah. Um, they were singing songs, and I got every inspiration from them. And I was singing a little bit quiet, so you didn't hear mm. us too much. I was like, I'm no, still you were. Standing. Was, you know, I, I mean, it was, in, 
It was in a good like we know, we know Barry like you've yeah. obviously played him before. I, I played I, three times I've played, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Him and Lee are lovely lads, so I think they took it in the right spirit. Yeah. They knew that we were it, it was it, intended it was, as banter rather than yeah. Because yeah. then after that, it was like, oh right, I'm gonna res, and then you took the night out, and I was like, I'm yeah. gonna res more. So I was getting, I had like by the time the, the next round came around, I had like four more back, yeah. and I was like, I'm back, baby. <laughs> Let's yeah. go. But it was, um, it, yeah, it could have. That's it, it, uh, the, uh, the one swing actually that we, that we briefly didn't mention on mm. was um, it was such a shame because he had those um, those chaos pink spawn, yeah, yeah pink, the pink horrors. horrors. So for anyone who doesn't know what those ones are, because I didn't know before going into it, was these chaos pink pink horrors, pink horrors, say? yeah, pink horrors. Basically, these little pink things, little, lots little, of arms, yeah, little cool it, pink it, demons, yeah. If you kill them on a is it a free on a up four or four up, up, they split into they split the blue in horrors, blue yeah. horrors, yes. <laughs> So basically, if you kill a pink one on a four up, it, two of them come back. Yeah. In in blue ones, and then you kill same, a blue one. Kill a blue one. A yellow one comes yeah, up. Yeah. Um. So it's you know, and I think they're all OC one as well. Yeah. So yeah. the more I killed, the more OC they got. So I was very worried about them basically coming back. They they moved a, a, un, a big unit of those pink horrors yeah. into the midboard to try and tarp yeah. it the lich guard yes. and keep them in. Um, oh, were they battle line as well? Actually, yeah. The, the pink so ones they, are battle yeah, lines. So they're they, OC two. They would have basically owned that objective. So they, then. if you imagine where the the um the centre objective, yeah, they had they needed to capture that. I think they had yeah. storm hostile objective. So they you yeah. were on it at one side, yes, and they just crept on the other side and got more OC on, but they, they didn't charge you. Well, when they tri- well, yeah, because oh, I think and then, they advanced and so, some did they? Yeah, and then yeah, they did. And then I and then and so in our turn they. Yeah. Out in the open, and we thought us. I was like, we're not going to kill all these. We might as well try and whittle them. Uh, and I just, to, I yeah. gunned them down. Lee failed all of his invuns, Honestly, and then, and then I didn't get a so single bad, reroll yeah. on his um on bringing a blue horror back. Yeah. So we, we just wiped the unit. It was. Um, and I literally remember when he was taking them off. He was taking them off from the objective. Yeah. And then he's a he's a player. He's a uh, he's um his friend was like, oh, um you're brave, aren't you? And he was like, oh. Don't, don't worry, we're going to get them back. Yeah. The blue horrors are going back. He failed them all. And I was like, yeah. oh my goodness. And I also felt bad as well because like all of the exotic, you know, they're all painted up. They're mm, all built, painted. Yeah. And then they looked absolutely amazing. I was literally talking to them before the game and I was like, he's got them all ranked up on the side of the board. Yeah, ready, ready to, to go. On. Yeah. And he failed them all. And I was like, man, I was like, you've painted like an extra like 20 models. Yeah. <laughs> and you weren't able to bring them. It was horrible for yeah. them. Um, but that was but, that was. Uh, I mean, enjoyed all the games. Oh, uh, second but, one was second one was really hard. The, th- really the last game fought. was was um, very hard fought. I, and and but both of those uh, look. You know, you just got to admit that look plays a part either way, doesn't it? I think game three was probably my favorite because with you and your dark lances. How many did you miss in a row again? Oh god, so like I don't know. Fourteen yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I, I stole his dice and I went to another table where we're friends. When I was like, I need you to bless this. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I got the entire table just to put the little hands on. Like, oh, <laughs> no, it worked. Um, just turn turn three, yeah. wiped out like three three, three nights nights or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So it finally did the trick. Did the trick. But yeah, we we I, we had a um the dark lances in my Jakari list. Yeah. Are, are the new Nightbringer for me. Like yeah. I just. If they're a unit that sh- they, they on paper they should absolutely punch. They should. And then I just keep rolling ones and twos. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even with the rerolls. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm even seeing with re-rolls it, I'm like, on, oh, yeah, damn, yeah. hit them. And uh, it's funny because like, if you don't kill them, I'm just like out in the open. Yeah, exactly. Shot, like, Dan, you've left us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of need you there. Uh, but yes. yeah, it was overall, um, oh, we, took, we, we played a couple of practice games to help one of our friends. Lewis was undecided on what faction he was going to take. So I he, don't think he, we helped in that situation. No, probably though. not. No. But, but, um, but we played a couple of practice games and I said after those that this was my new favourite way to play good. I think it's um, it's, it's much more chilled yeah. than one on one and because you're not doing everything all the time or having to focus on what your opponent's yeah. doing there's more time to talk Yeah. so obviously at any one point there's two people interacting like you and one of your opponents yeah. and then you, you're, then the other person on your team can be interact talking to yeah. the person on I, their team I think what happened for the majority of boards it was like one player was the melee and one player was the yeah, shooting for a lot of it, yeah. so like for you were shooting and I was melee and I think on the other side Lee again he was melee and obviously Barry was shooting yes. so whenever yes. you and Barry were shooting at each other I was just talking to Lee yeah. and I was like oh yeah when you do it uh, dusting up I'm yeah. talking to Barry yeah. I kept asking him, you had these like chariots and I was like oh, oh. the eagles he's like no I was like Oh, the infantry. He's like, nah. I was like, what are these? I was like, they look and they look like oh, they're incredible, aren't they? Yeah, it's these chariot things. They're, just, like, they're mounted units, basically. Yeah. But they looked incredible. Yeah, and all quite a paint. It was an, an interesting. Um, so the the tournament organisers have said very much like the Wildlings tournaments are not um, GTs. Obviously, no. they're not yep. really RTTs. Not like they're not. You don't get ITC points for going or yep. UKTC points. So they, they don't attract the. Um, there's there's no sharks in the tank, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And they're meant to be a bit more casual. And uh, this was meant to be m- very much a fluffy narrative event. Mm. Uh, so there was, and the organizers made that clear. But 
it was very clear from looking at the list on BCP before we went that this was actually more competitive than <laughs> than than the last tournament that yeah. we went to. Um, I think there was a, there was some people there that brought some very competitive yeah. lists. Um, but I think like maybe like a thousand points does that does that force you to bring a competitive list because then that, that doesn't give you the flexibility of being like oh and bring like a two thousand point list oh five hundred points is what I like like I these five hundred yeah. points are the army like the units I, that I love to I play. I don't know not as best. I don't know a massive amounts about chaos demons, but I'll be amazed if what Lee brought was like a meta chaos demon mm, list. I don't know. I think he just yeah. brought what he likes. Yeah. Um. Just, you yeah. know, that's what he did. Yeah. Because uh, that's what it was meant to be, and they was they still nearly beat us. They yeah. drew one game with the guys that came second, mm. so get, and they won the first one by a hundred yeah. points as well. So it gives you, you know, the, the an insight into the caliber of those as players is even yeah. without bringing a meta, you know, a sweaty list. Yeah. They were, they still on another day they could have won the tournament. So well, again, if you say it like that, so obviously we lost the people who won. They yes. drew to people that won, yes. but then we won them. Yeah, it's it's yeah, so strange yeah. again. Like obviously that's yeah. where like again it's like not so much the meta, but like the arms that you face. You know, yeah. If you bring maybe someone that's in the forty-five more percentage mark, not the forty-four. Not forty-four. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we might get a bit high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, but yes, it was again overall fantastic day. I'm looking forward to the next one. I really hope they do more doubles. In I think it was a, a bit of a success. Yeah, and within our friendship group, I think there was everyone was buzzing after doubles. Yeah. I think everyone enjoyed it. We put a lot of memes in our chat, being yeah. like, "Oh, this happened, this happened." <laughs> it was really fun to see. Yeah, so everyone seemed to have a really good time yeah, as well. Exactly. So uh, I think it's probably in terms of how we're going to play. Um, yeah. In our friendship group, doubles is definitely more doubles is definitely on yeah. the cards. I would recommend it if you haven't tried it. Uh, mm. Definitely go and give it a go. Yeah. Um, either with your friendship group or your local gaming store. Yeah. It's great for friends because it just means you can get more of you around a table, really. Yeah. And also, it's a lot less shit to carry about, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it was actually so much easier. Yeah. Just the you difference know? between carrying a thousand and two thousand yeah, points. Yeah. It's literally just a little box that I yeah. had. I was like, oh, this is great. It's, it's only a thousand points. Yeah. Um, not if you're not free monoliths or anything like that. But yeah. yeah. No, just um, well, that was going to say is like um, I was wondering about this because obviously. Um, Chaos Knights are quite high in the meta, so mm. um, yeah. no disrespect to anybody there who, who took Chaos Knights, but um, you you could take them safe in the knowledge that they're quite a strong faction at the moment. Yeah, really good. Um, but I, uh, my theory is that the reason is there's so many knights there, and my theory is, is because you took three monoliths to the last tournament. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, I really hope it's not. Oh, there man. was, uh, I mean... It, it, an entire ma- area of people to yeah, be um, three monoliths. The kind of local club meta changes all the time, the same as the actual meta does, but uh, I don't remember ever seeing that many knights in the meta. <laughs> Ever <laughs> uh, like, like it's, it's, yeah. it, uh, I was like, everybody's got knights. Everyone did. Have and I'm, knights, I'm yeah. convinced it's because they were. They all thought, well, if he's going to bring Monlis together, yeah. I need to take them down. <laughs> I mean, I still, I still came third. I was, yeah. still, I was still happy yeah. with that. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I said this um, in the past, but even even a casual tournament like um, like this, uh, the players are there, obviously there to win. Yeah. The, the, the re- what you're not meant to be doing is trying to like if if there's a very clear um, disparity between skill levels, you're not meant to try and smash your opponents off the board. Yeah. And I don't exactly. think anybody did that. And I thought it was quite nice because actually mentioned that at the start as well. Yeah. Being like, look, we're not here to win. You know, we're not here to absolutely smash the opponent. No. Let's give people a chance here. Let's give people a good, a good game, basically. Stephen, the organizer, nice. has had a key influence mm. in the culture of that club, and the yeah. culture is one of, very much one of nurturing and helping yeah. each other rather than um, being a competitive sweaty yeah. balls. Nobody likes that. Yeah. Um, not that's not to say that the club doesn't produce um, very good competitive yeah. players, but the idea is you 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 compete in the right way. Let's get more people involved yeah. first before yeah. we smash them. Basically, yeah. Sure. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> But it's, yeah, it's about it's just yeah. about competing the right way, so yeah. that, so that your opponent learns something and gets something from the game, and, and yeah. rather than just picking them up. Yeah, the worst thing is I think I've had it in a few tournaments, not the Wildlings, but when it was down at the GT down Manchester, mm-hmm. where it was like people were just like have, picking up like the six dice and being like, "All right, cool, but I've got some rules here, but I've got some re rolls, and we'll do this." And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, slow down, slow yeah, down. Like, slow down. Like, I'm sorry, I know you know your rules, but a you could be absolutely cheating, but, and yeah. b I want to learn what you're doing. Yeah. So please, yeah. like, like tell tell me what you're doing. But th- th- this always happens in the games that we play. We always see, oh, I'm rerolling. You don't know your Jokari. You always put like nice little handy dice for the ones that get the rerolls. Yes. Um. So it's like if you're doing your rerolls, Dan, you indicate it next to your models that this yeah, these have rerolls. Yeah, you put a token down next to so, so yeah, yeah. So when you're picking up your dice and you're rolling and then rolling again, and they know the, why. the opponent yeah. is again, they know what you're doing. Yeah. So they don't they don't think, oh, is he cheating here? It's like, yeah. oh no, the dice is there. And then whenever you were done, you're picking up the dice, or even I was picking up the dice yeah. just to remove it, just to help the players. Yes. Because it's good to yeah, learn that way. Exactly. And and. From um, my perspective, uh, one of the things you actually touched on was that the reason you like doubles is you get to experience many more arms yeah. playing against different opponents. Yeah, exactly. So, um, well, we're certainly very well versed against playing against Chaos Knights now. I was going to say, I, I, feel, I feel well 
love to do yeah. it on, on Chaos Knights yeah. now. Um, but yes, um, obviously, uh, again, yeah, the one you know, that's four armies, and I even know more about Drakari now because yeah. I was saying, oh, could you go here and shoot them? Could you go here and shoot yeah, them? Yeah. And, and I think even at one point you found uh, I've done a strat when I was like, wait, you've never done this in, in previous games where like. You, you can get your units out of a vehicle and yeah. shoot and put them back in. It's but, an ability with the yeah. venoms, yeah, and which which I'd missed. So you can you can mm-hmm. you can move the venom, yeah, up behind a building, disembark the jacari in front of the building, or on top of the building, or on top of the building, yeah. and then at the end of the fight phase, they're allowed to jump back in the yeah. building. But you always put them out, like not in, in the, the vehicle, open. sorry, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you never put them in the open. But like when you start putting them on top of the building, I was mm. like, wait, I was like, that's, that's amazing because. You can pull them back, and obviously, when they go on the second floor, they can see a lot more yeah, stuff. And yeah, it's like, yeah, that's great. That's so it, good. It made a big difference, didn't yeah, it? So um, good. And I feel that's uh, uh, my um, goal as a player is to try and go to these events and come back, come away from them feeling I've improved as a player. Yes. Like as much as uh, I want my opponents to have a good time, which yeah. I think they did. I want to have a good time, which I definitely did. Mm-hmm. But also, like, am I becoming a better, a better, better, and understanding the wider game and better at using my faction? Yeah. And I think. As long as you can take those away from any event, then you're winning, aren't you? Definitely. And um, definitely. carrying you to third place is just a bonus. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. No, it was, right. uh, we didn't really, you know, like I said, it, it was meant to be um, fun, a fun event, and we didn't really, I don't think, even was put that much thought into our lists. No. Um, it was like... I think we literally made, I think you made your list, I made our list. We didn't talk, I think you, I think all we said was, I'll be the meat yeah, yeah. You shoot. Yeah. And then it was literally, I think, be- like two days before the game that we were going to be playing against our friend. We're like, oh, this is my list. And you're like, this yeah. is your list. And we're like, yeah, that looks good. And yeah. we're just like, yeah, we're sound. And let's, I, think, let's do I it. think that's the best way to approach it. And then, yeah. You, uh, uh, we, we didn't think too hard into it because I think when you think too hard, you start overthinking it. You and do. Like, and it, that, it, it this, wasn't, that. Yeah. And it. You know, list building is, yeah, it's an important thing, but the most important thing is learning how to play the game, like yeah. learning how to improve as a player. Yeah. And you can do that whatever you take on the day. Mm-hmm. It's a put, whatever you take. Um, and whatever your opponent puts down then becomes the puzzle for that yes. data for you to solve. Yeah. And that's what I enjoy, I really enjoy about 40k. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, uh, again, absolutely love the tournament. Um, I'm looking forward to the next one, uh, doubles primarily. Um, yeah, massive thumbs up to Wildlands again. Please, yeah. no more servo skills, though, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you want. Yeah, yeah. You do what you want. Yeah. Not his name, all right? <laughs> He's just a grouchy, grouchy kid. <laughs> I am. <laughs> but yes, yeah, no, well, thanks again for watching. Any comments, please leave below. Anything about the obviously latest uh, Necron Codex? Let we know unit, unit review as well. Yeah, what do you want to see? Let next? us know what next on unit review and uh, and also your experiences against Chaos Space Marines or playing them. Yeah, and um, it, get some doubles in, get some doubles games mm-hmm. in, and let us know how they go. 